there is one sector, one sector that is absolutely booming right now, and it is the social enterprise um, sector, and it's, it's gaining a huge amount of interest from this investment community that now doesn't really know where to put their money. So just to give you some figures, uh, it's, a, it's a huge sector, employs more than 650,000 people in the UK, contributes more than £8 billion uh, pounds to UK GDP and generates turnover altogether of over £27 million. Billion pounds. Uh, so it's a, it's a massive sector. And basically, social enterprise uh, is like this. It's a business, it's a profit-making business whose goal is to tackle a social or environmental problem. So I, I look at it in this way. You've got about 40 years of your life to dedicate your, your skills and your talents and your professional abilities to something. So you can either go away and make money, or you can do something more meaningful and go and work for a charitable organisation, or you can do both. You can make, you can generate profit out of solving a social or environmental problem. Even if lots of us have really good ideas for a better world, that actually the challenges to making them happen are huge. The barriers to get access to the knowledge, the capital, the networks, it's not easy. And time after time, these 50 pioneering souls told us similar stories of how they were stuck in their bedrooms, feeling pretty lonely and downbeat, getting rejected after rejected in their pursuit of realizing their social business. So it began to dawn on us, um, well, what if we could create a physical place where people with good ideas for the world could come and make them happen, get access to the nuts and bolts of desks and chairs and fax machines, but also to each other and to a world of investment and opportunity. And maybe they'd collaborate and realize more together than they could alone. We're noticing some kind of brave souls that are finding the audacity of hope in a time of so-called meltdown and turning it to huge opportunity. People that are willing to break the rules, you know, to travel in the, in the opposite direction from everyone else. You know, so you read the papers, and it looks like everyone's you know, driving at a brick wall at 100 miles an hour and arguing over, arguing over where, where they want to sit. And yet, the tactics of the people standing up at the hub seem to be to change direction completely and to find, find new opportunity, to remodel and reimagine the very kind of fabric of our world, of how we think about food, travel, energy. But the main part um, of this slide is killing two birds with one stone. Whenever anyone asks me to describe really what a social enterprise is, that's what I say. You know, I only exist to solve a waste problem, but I use everything I know about business in order to solve that problem, not in a small way, but in an absolutely massive way, literally, E Eco intends to become one of the, the world's top luxury brands over the next five years. Uh, we're already starting to collect waste in America for production in the American market and sales in the American market. We're already starting to collect waste in Asia. French fire hose, by the way, is this gorgeous gunmetal gray color, so we'll have lots of ranges to roll out in the future. <laughs> but it's about killing two birds with one stone. It's about having goodness and business combined together. Um, and equally, somebody, somebody asked me today, you know, do I think that you know, entrepreneurs will be as successful if they don't have sustainability in mind? And, and I really, really don't think they will, not in the long term. I think if you don't protect and support people and planet with your business, then you, you, you're not going to be sustainable. We don't have time for it. The planet doesn't have time for it. And uh, I'll take you back just to this first slide because this actually was a house party that I went to, and I'm that little girl in the front, and that's 2001. And the next morning, we got up and spent about five hours cleaning up. Uh, we took all the glass, the recycling, uh, we scrubbed down that pool deck, and you know, we picked up all the litter that was made, and we spent a lot of time cleaning up after that party. Um, what Eco does is, is clean up on a much bigger scale. This, this business was designed as a really, really badass broom, and that's what we're, what we're going to be. Because last year we were saying, don't come and tell us what we should be doing in a social enterprise market that imitates the mediocrity of the market. Actually, this year we're saying, don't come and tell us what to do that creates the failure of your market. 
because actually we're going to create those different forms. We're going to use the different instruments, the different ways of doing things to create change, and, and that's what we're doing. So we're doing three things at the moment. We're creating a social, um, uh, an alternative credit rating index where we believe that we can bring 1.2 million people in this country into regulated credit who at the moment are at the mercy of the high street lenders, average uh, um, percent they pay the APR, uh, percent of 169%. Those are the doorstop lenders, the bats, the baseball bat people, the high street retailers. How long have I got, Cliff? Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the baseball bat people uh, and so on because actually there are a lot of people who really are lendable to. Um, and, and, and the banks, when they started on their subprime, um, uh, they just didn't know people. We say that we've changed the face of homelessness because actually there's 135,000 people face a homeless or vulnerably housed or an at-risk person in the eyes, and it becomes an act of socialisation as well as financial transaction. Somebody else I know said, you saved our li my life, because he was gay, he was a drug dealer on the south coast, went inside, came out, knew if he stayed south coast, he'd be inside again. Came to London, he sold, um, came to us, he sold six, seven days a week, uh, 10, 12 hours a day. In seven weeks, he, he got enough to get a deposit on a flat, and um, I, uh, uh, a rented flat. Um, and um, I don't define people by, by, by their partners, really, but the fact is he then went off, worked for the most major charity in the country. He's an IT manager um, and is living with the head of education. And, and he said, that was it. That was the big issue. That's what it did for me. So, you know... Conventionally, you run into a number of laws, you know, 48 hour week, uh, all sorts of other problems that you would have had if they hadn't been self-employed. And those are things which are impinging, I think, on, on the whole of the scope that there is for these things. Anything becoming conventional is going to get destroyed by that sort of regulation. Um, I don't know. I, I... I, I, you know, our staff don't work those kind of hours. Well, they do, if they don't tell us, right? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, we don't, you know, uh, uh, our staff don't do that. And, you know, as a self-employed person, that vendor has taken control of their lives. It's up to them what they want to do. And that's a model, you know, that's a direct selling model that Avon has used, that um, in microstock that Avon have used, that Tupperware have used, that Ann Summers have used, that Body Shop. And actually they are four conventional business models and we've just used that. The LDA is supporting businesses in London, particularly interested in supporting social enterprises in London through its program calling, called Designing Demand. Now the Designing Demand program they're putting three and a half million pounds into it and Design London, along with Grant Thornton, are help delivering that program. That program is aiming to help 300 businesses in London really exploit the power of design to take them to another level and particularly focused on social enterprises to make, help them really get themselves powered by design. As you saw the impact with Cressy, I'm sure there's some very design-oriented businesses already in the hub and the design component of the big issues is self-evident. Now, if you are interested in participating in that program, please go to our website tomorrow afternoon. We'll be putting some information up there about some special events that you can go to. Two of those events are running at the end of February, February the 24th and 25th, when there is a very detailed briefing on the program. But put very simply, if three and a half million pounds is going in, 300 businesses benefit, it's about 12,000 pounds worth of value for, on average for businesses that participate in the program. So I would urge you to get very, very involved with that and really exploit that to the full. You'll also find out about other executive education that we're providing, including a special event for social enterprises as well, and these events are free for participating small to medium-sized enterprises in London. Normally they're charged at about £250 a day, but they're free, funded by the LDA, to help businesses like your own take that next step. And that's 
again, supported by the LDM, we're very pleased to have that kind of support from them.